Let's talk about elasticity. Elasticity. Now we may already have some some idea about what it is, but in this video we'll try to concretize the exact meaning of this particular term, all right? So let's start with some examples. We all know what elastic materials are and what non-elastic materials are. For example, we may have played with say rubber bands or springs, so they are elastic in nature. So let's, let's write that down. Let's write down examples of elastic materials. So elastic, we know that things like a rubber band, so rubber, or maybe a spring, so let's say a spring, these are elastic in nature. And uh, things which are not elastic, well, you probably know them as well. For example, let's say a clay. Clay is pretty non-elastic. Mud. These are some of the examples of non-elastic materials. These are non-elastic. Non-elastic. And now the big question is, what is the meaning of elasticity? I want you to think about this. Why do we call these things as elastic and these things as non-elastic? Well, the main idea is that if you take a rubber band, let's say, and if you stretch it, you deform it, and then if you let go of the deforming force, then it snaps back to its original shape. Same is the case with the spring. However, if you were to take, say, something like clay or mud, and if you were to deform that by putting some force and then you remove that deforming force, well, it doesn't snap back to its original shape. Its shape has changed permanently. And that's what allows us to make beautiful dolls like this using clay. So we could now say elasticity is a property, is a property due to which when you remove a deforming force, so you remove the deforming force the material regains its original shape. So, regains original shape. So, rubber bands and springs do that, clays and mud balls don't do that, perfect. But here's the big question. What about something like steel? Where do you put that? Is that elastic or is it non-elastic? Think about this, look at the definition of elasticity and I want you to pause the video, think about this for a while. Where would you place steel? All right. So let's start with the common answer. The most common answer for this is that steel is not elastic. And if I ask why, then one may say, well, that's because, well, you can't deform steel, right? A steel is rigid body, it doesn't undergo deformation now, does it? Well, the answer is it does undergo deformation. You can definitely say bend spoons, right? Well, then you could say, oh, okay. The reason why it's not elastic is because if you bend steel, it doesn't snap back to its original shape. That's why it's non-elastic. Well, turns out not really. And in fact, you can test this at home. So take a knife, which is made of steel, and then you bend it a little bit, and notice it snaps back. Try it one more time. Ah, it snaps back. So guess what? Right in your kitchen, you can just convince yourself that steel is in fact elastic. Another thing to note would be is that most of the springs that we may have played with is indeed made of steel. So if the springs are elastic, it's because steel itself is elastic. So from this, we could actually say that, st yeah, steel is actually elastic in nature. Another example could be bone. Human bone is pretty elastic. For example, a human bone undergoes deformations. So when you're carrying very heavy weights, for example, then the bone of your legs does undergo deformations. But they are very tiny deformations, but they're there. And when you get rid of that deforming force, when you, maybe you get rid of those weights, then they snap back to their original shape, just like a rubber band. The only difference is with the rubber band, you can see that deformation. So we feel that, yeah, these are elastic. And with steel and other material, the deformations are microscopic and we can't see them but they're there and when you remove the deforming force, they snap back to their original shape and therefore they're also pretty elastic. But now here comes the big question. What makes things elastic or non-elastic? What's the reason for this property? Well, to understand that, we need to dig deeper into the material. So for example, if we were to look into rubber band, what makes a rubber band so elastic? Well, if we were to look deep into it, this is a mic uh, magnifying glass, what would we see? Well, we would see a bunch of atoms. So imagine we're zooming in and we're seeing a bunch of atoms. I'm gonna draw a couple of atoms, literally, just two. And what we'll do is we have to understand 
the nature of the force between them. That's going to help us figure this out. So it turns out that these atoms can attract each other or they can even repel each other. When the rubber band is in the relaxed state, the atoms are pretty much in equilibrium. They don't repel, they don't attract, they are happy there. But if you were to stretch the rubber band, then the atoms are pulled far apart. They don't like that. They want to come back to their original, original position, equilibrium position. So in that case, what they do is they end up pulling on each other. And similarly, if you were to, if you were to compress this rubber band somehow, so if you were to push these atoms close to each other, again, they don't like that, and now they start pushing each other away. They start pushing each other. And so because of this kind of force, the rubber band always tries to come back to its original shape. So it's as if the atoms are being tied by a spring. I mean, they're not really done, they're not really tied like this, but it, it feels like that, right? So when you stretch a spring, it you know, comes back, and when you compress a spring again, it snaps back. So we can visualize that the atoms of the rubber band are all connected by springs, and that's why when you stretch them, or when you compress it, it tends to snap back to its original shape. And same is the case with steel and bone. But just like with any spring, if you were to pull it with a huge deforming force, then it loses its elastic property. It now undergoes permanent deformation. It doesn't snap back anymore. Well, similarly, if you were to pull these atoms too far apart, then even they would lose their elastic property, even they would stop, stop attracting each other, and there will be permanent deformation. So elasticity has limit, right? So we could say it has, has limit. So if the deforming force is too high, then the material will undergo permanent deformation. It will not regain its original shape, and we would say it has lost its elastic property. But a good question would be, well, how much is too much? Well, that depends on the material. Well, for example, something like if you take clay or, or mud, then it turns out that that limit is very low. So these things have very low limit. So even with very tiny forces, the forces we put with our fingers, they lose their elastic property very quickly. And it's for that reason we call them as non-elastic. We also call them as plastic materials. They're the same things, non-elastic or plastic. But with stuff like say rubber or steel, then that limit is a little bit high. So it has a little bit higher limit, so high limit. So when you put tiny amount of forces with our fingers, we can actually see them deforming and we can see their elastic properties. But they do have a limit. For example, if you were to take, say, a rubber band and stretch it too much, then it will also have some permanent deformation. So they do have a limit. All right, so the last thing we'll do is think about how do we compare elasticity of two materials? How do we check whether something is more elastic or less elastic? Well, to do that, we'll go back to the definition of elasticity. Well, if something can withstand a lot of deforming force and still regain its original shape, then we'll say it is more elastic. On the other hand, if something, even, even for small deforming forces, it permanently gets deformed, then we will say it is less elastic. Makes sense, right? So based on that, let's now tackle the most classic question when it comes to elasticity. Which one is more elastic, rubber? or steel. Think about this, I want you to pause the video and based on the definition of elasticity and based on what we just discussed, think about which one do you think is more elastic in nature and try to come up with a reason. All right, the most common answer again I get for this is rubber. And if I ask why, well one may say that, well that's because rubber stretches a lot and steel snaps back. But steel, I can't imagine steel being stretched as much as rubber right? It would just break. So maybe rubber is more elastic, right? Well, remember when we are thinking about elasticity, we don't care how much the material deforms. That's irrelevant. What we only care about is how much deforming force it can withstand and still snap back to its original shape. So the fact that rubber stretches a lot is not a good way to think about elasticity. A better way to think about elasticity could be something like this. What we could do is we could have a wire of steel. So imagine this is steel wire, steel wire. And then we could have a similar, similar sized, let's say same length and same thickness, 
rubber wire. And what we'll do is, we'll deform them by hanging weights. Suppose we hang, say, 50 kilograms of weights for both of these. What would happen to steel? Well, steel would hardly get any deformation. The deformation in steel would be microscopic. And when you get rid of that 50 kilogram, if you remove that 50 kilogram, well, steel would just snap back. So it is elastic. But with rubber, if you were to hang 50 kilograms of weight, then I'm sure you would agree with me that it would stretch a lot. It would stretch a lot like this. Here's the 50 kilogram. But that's not important. What's important now is that if you were to remove that 50 kilogram, rubber will not snap back to its original shape. It would have had some permanent deformation. Again, you can try that with the rubber band at home, stretch it a lot, get rid of it, and then you will see the rubber band is a little bit longer. So, steel can easily withstand 50 kilogram without having any permanent deformation, whereas rubber can't. In fact, guess what? Steel, as we'll study later, can withstand about 1,000 kilograms about 1,000 kilograms of weight without undergoing any permanent deformation. But with rubber, few tens of kilograms, and it will undergo permanent deformation. So if you think of it that way, which one is more elastic? Well, it's steel, because it can withstand a lot of deforming force without undergoing permanent deformation. All right, to summarize, usually we think that if you can stretch something a lot, it is more elastic. But that's not how you should think about elasticity. Think of it as if it, something can withstand a lot of deforming force and still snap back, then that is more elastic.